Welcome everyone, I am admin of one Infinity Effects, and today we are delving into a pretty unique and interesting bit of marathon community lore, so to speak, that is in the form of a scenario, though one may argue it's not a scenario proper as it's more of an interactive reading piece rather than an action one. You don't really play in the level. It is just one level. This is the marathon book presentation. No, sorry, Marathon Trilogy book presentation by a somewhat legendary community member named Moppy Puppy. This was basically his way of presenting an idea to Bungie Software about a possible marathon revival, if you will, in the mid-2000s, not long, of course, after they really broke out with Halo. And he did so rather creatively through this level. I believe he was in his teens at the time. So... I may not have that much commentary about this, but I just thought it was worth showcasing. Depending on what's in there, I may very well stop reading at points to give brief commentary on uh, the ideas. Oops, disable Vasara there. So, start off in a pretty regular looking room. Just a nice visual, visuals into a more rounded area. You can see on the map that, that is called the Inner Ring. Nice use of the lattices here. As well as the variation in ceiling height for, I'm assuming, cosmetic purposes, but one that makes it you know, more memorable. Is more of a sense of place. Okay, so we have looks like a door that won't open and two terminals. I'm not sure if there's one I should read first, but I imagine they're identical more or less. So let's start with the left one first, left to right. You can see the Duke at the bottom right reading a book. I suppose this is like a mascot from an earlier version of Microsoft Word, from what I remember. Marathon Trilogy Book Presentation. Hey, check it out. Now, this isn't an ordinary running gun scenario. Actually, this is just the running part, actually. You'll be running from terminal to terminal, going through the presentation. The map has enemies, but they won't bother you. I hope this doesn't disappoint you. I could have put the presentation all in one terminal, but experience tells me that long terminals lead to impatience and irritability. And seeing as this is a persuasive presentation, Irritability is the last thing I'm going for, so take a break whenever you feel like it. Two terminal sections. By the way, it's pretty funny if you know the broader context of uh, this whole story about Moppy Puppy's relationship to Bungie Sop from the mid 2000s. That his point here is in uh, trying not to irritate them. I won't go into it here, although I imagine most of you who are watching this already know the story. But I'll give a brief description and link in the description about the whole backstory and how funny it is. Now when you're reading through the terminals, one, read for understanding. If impatience sets in, take a break. You only got forever. Some say they're still going through it to this day because they know they got forever. Two, when reading, the voice you read with shouldn't be that of a fan. Instead, think of a person that you deeply respect reading the presentation to you. I have high self-esteem, but a fan is a fan. And are fans really taken seriously? <laughs> it's also a bit of funny irony in that one. 3. Be open-minded. I like how it does it in red text. You know, like it's a serious warning or injunction. Note, I didn't quite learn Forge well enough to have the teleporter in the center of the map activate after you're done. Don't stand on it until you're done with the presentation. Okay. Despite what we didn't know about with Forge, I do think this is a nicely designed little presentation level. I wouldn't bet an eye if this were featured in a serious infinity, sorry, infinity scenario where the level was just meant to be expository like an intermission level between the serious action-packed ones. Or even like a prologue or epilogue level. Alright. 
times. That's one. Okay. It says when the presentation is done, head to the central teleporter that will take you to the decision room. Duke will instruct you when you get there. I like how once again he uses the same red text that he used for basically what was in order. By the way, orders are an important theme to this. I wonder if anyone is watching this who watched any of my Marath Marathon Huge Duke levels playthrough and still doesn't know the broader context and how much they could remember between these two that would connect them together in their minds. I'd be interested to know the perspective, although, as it is, I don't have too many viewers, but still every viewer counts. Alright, so intro. Two terminal sections. Intro continued. Three terminal sections. MTB B part. Sorry, start. One terminal sections. MTBP terminal one. Ten terminal sections. Did he forget to put in the numbers for MTBP term three and four? So I suppose we're in the intro right now, so two terminal sections means what I just read in this one. Or no, this should be intro continued, so it's just three pages here. Good, because I was wondering, like, would there be a, basically a terminal message divided into 16 different terminals? But I really ultimately know that's not the case, because I previewed this, and although it was a few years before today, I remember enough that it wasn't that tedious. And there's the deck room. Is that, like, decorative? Anyway. Oh, to relieve the stress of guessing when long terminals are going to end, I've given the numbers above. Yeah, where you actually did give numbers. Though, for all I know, maybe there's some kind of strange error in the terminal text rendering here that wasn't here in the original. Run clockwise around the map. This may technically be a game, but the content in these terminals are entirely... <laughs> he says professionally misspells it. That's, that's great. Are entirely professional and factual based on its sources. I'll be straightforward with this. Telling you what I'm telling you now may be the one unprofessional thing in this presentation. He misspells it again. I've made this presentation to try and convince you into making a marathon trilogy book. Or into creating a book that takes place after infinity. Now don't turn this off until you've heard the presentation. I believe it's got some persuasive stuff in it. Okay. So the inner ring should go clockwise. So that means, well, I mean they're numbered on the map anyways, which order to go in. So I really made sure that order to read everything in. We're outside the intro room. Good use of ambient sounds. Kind of outside scenery. Look at this too. It's got a stream of Yeah, they're responding. Bob's against four. sure I saw it. Fire rockets in there. To make things bizarre and inconsistent, but as to the humor of it all, this thing looks like a good uh, screensaver, really. This recurring uh, rack and capture noises that were a little annoying. So I like the rack and this. this Parts of this are more directly blocked with walls and collapses. There's a little uh, space between that. Alright. At least in these little terminal rooms, those uh, rack and capture recurring noises don't happen. So. Alright. So you see Marathon with a nice little logo, version of a logo that has scratch marks in it. Has a 
his little avatar character, the Duke, looking at it. It's a marathon. It started and came out in 1994 and was a great FPS for its time. Though I only found out about it until... So, just a few things off the bat. Firstly, I don't doubt that he really likes and appreciates Marathon. And that any potential Bungie employee reading up to this point would get that sense. But still, it seems almost backhanded to say, great for its time. And then, I only found out about it until late 2004. Just... I mean, I don't want to just pettily pick apart someone's grammatical errors. But... This is funny. It's as though he forgot it, forgot about it in 2004. And at any rate, it's just with some little, uh, roasting, which has been done to me as well. After all, Moppy Puppy did crop up fairly recently, over the past year, uh, basically pestering Aaron about little things on his uh, YouTube channel, which is called Vidmaster Challenge and Occasional Metal. Very good marathon-related channel that I recommend, as well as metal-related, of course. Metal music, that is. Anyway, so full 10 years after its release. I found that unlike its Doom counterpart, Marathon had a very fluid story that was moved on by terminals liberally placed around the levels. The story of Marathon is a great one, and playing through it is like sitting down reading a story, except you are shooting aliens. <laughs> so I guess creating Marathon made you the storyteller and your fans like me the children intently listening, all of you around a campfire. <laughs> Seems like kind of a weird metaphor to use, like because it's simply associated with storytelling that it would be like that. I'm surprised he didn't, he didn't just say, all of you around a campfire except you're shooting aliens. Ellipsis. Well, maybe that was a bit too dramatic. Kill all four bastards. <laughs> Actually, if anything, that part was a bit more dramatic. It's not that it seemed dramatic about the whole campfire part, per se, maybe the whole thing about all of us being like children and you storytellers, but this one's more dramatic anyway. Marathon 2 to Randall. Nice use of the little uh, shipwreck image there. The continuation after the events aboard the Marathon where Durandal took control of the four ship and took you, the Spit, and an army of former colonists to the Spit homeworld, where you seek out the Spitker, a lost clan of Spit hopefully capable of destroying the four. I don't know how much Bungie needed a recap, but then again, I'm sure, you know, possible Bungie employees uh, would have come seen this after, uh, after the fact. They would have been hired after the creation of Marathon 2, so they may not be as intimately familiar or have it as fresh in their memory. Still, what's the point, I wonder, if I'm bringing this up, I'll see. In the end, it comes to a victory. Four on and around the planet are routed. The Spitker take revenge. Blake and his men escape, and Tycho dies. As for the player and his Durandal, I don't really know. Durandal tells no one of what he learned to remember. <laughs> then it ended. Now, if I'm right, all the Marathon fans at the time thought it was over. It wasn't. Later, Marathon Infinity came out. Okay. So now I'm in a totally disconnected subroom, far away from the main area. So, Marathon Infinity. Hard to tell what the story is. If you have the time, you can correct any discrepancies in my interpretation of the story. Spelling, too. <laughs> I'd love that. It'd be, it'd be funny if they actually responded to him and sent back all the spelling and grammatical corrections. <laughs> Soon after everyone left, things went all right. The four, with the help of Tycho, a former Marathon AI, set a trap for Durandal. After forcing Durandal to flee, the four used the Trizine. This unleashed the Rackin character, an ancient chaos entity. <clears throat> so you go dimension hopping, killing humans, four, and whatever else you're told to kill until you reach a dimension a few minutes before the release of the Rackin character. <laughs> yeah. 
started making annoying noises. Then it ended after a very confusing monologue by who I think was Durandal. Ellipsis, eh? Now, I don't really know for sure, but does anyone else but you guys know if the end of Marathon Infinity conflicts with that of Marathon 2? I found, like I said earlier, that playing through the Marathon trilogy was like that of reading a book. Only this book had not a few holes but deep canyons in the story. Questions arise from these crevices, such as, what happened to the player? <clears throat> Don't focus on this question. There are much more important questions. Jason Jones once said, The really hard thing about the story is there are so many different ways to tell a story. There are so many different good stories. Telling a story in the game is different from telling a story in a book because a huge part of the story in the game is just leaning flavor to the times when you're playing it. Leaning flavor? I guess maybe that's uh, his way of saying that the story is more your experience of playing it or that it seems more like a, a backdrop or memento of whatever happening whatever's happening in your life at that point. I don't know. It seems like Jason Jones meant to end the quote earlier. Because for a bit, I thought that I was still reading a Jason Jones quote. But he might have meant to put the ending quotation after the end of the sentence marked in red there. Leaning flavor. With a book, you can cover all the stories in Marathon. Well, maybe not all, but maybe all the significant ones that we'd just love to hear about. That is why I think it, that a Marathon trilogy book would be a benefit to all of us who love Marathon. I would like that myself, yes. And it'd be especially interesting if, uh, much like with how the trilogy pro progressed, you get uh, something like uh, unraveling continuity over time and splitting timelines, or you might even jump back and forth between them like you did in the game. Now you're probably thinking, well, what about us? The answer is complicated and will be covered in the second part of this presentation. Please hurry, this terminal is the first of four, and with every passing moment, your chance to create a book is fading. Go. Okay, so I think we're at two now. Wait. Statistics are based off of the Halo copy sold in comparison to the Halo book copy sold. Now, how many Marathon downloads slash copies sold have there been since the release of Marathon up until 2005? Searching through Bungie forums, I got a lot for an answer. Well, the numbers got to be big, and now we're seeing as you release the Marathon trilogy as a free download, it's not hard to see that this may very well okay, let's rip it up. be there. The last time the popularity of Marathon peaks as far as it's ever been in a long time. If there's been a good time, this is it. Well, in a way, I mean, the ideal way to peak the popularity of Marathon would be to reboot it to start with. Bungie have a bunch of clout, but it's not really here nor there. So, Marathon Trilogy Book. Aside from benefiting the Marathon members of the Bungie community, I'm sure it will benefit you as much as the Halo, the Fall Breach, or the First Strike did. Statistics. This is correct. Halo is big money, so Halo, the Fall of Breach was successful, and interest was high for the other two books. Talk about true statistics. Hey, no hard feelings. Halo said, you know, Halo was huge. With Marathon as freeware, interest is, is as high as it'll go. We got Place a live advertisement here. on Bungie.net. I've seen you do this. <laughs> you better do this. I've seen you do it before. Get everyone's attention and 
Marathon Trilogy book will be successful. Okay, let's rip it up! The only personification is the third. Let's pick that. See, that's a uh, creature from Halo. But what's with the crude smiley face drawn on top of that? I guess we'll see what it might mean in the text. Problems, snags, whatever you call them, are ever present in book writing. And I'd be biased if I didn't tell you all of all that I am aware of. 1. Who will write it? A. Well, you guys are busy with their next project, so unless you got him working on a Halo 2 slash 3 book for Halo, you should call on Eric Nyland. He's my favorite book author. He depicted the Covenant perfectly. I can do the same for the 4. But for the love of God, don't get William C. Dietz to do it. I'm sorry if you liked him, but I don't like the way he depicted the aliens in the flood, if not Nyland. Get some other guy, it's not Dietz. Yeah, yeah, Zuko. Suppose this image then is uh, like a parody of something that William C. Dietz did as far as his choices of portraying the aliens. I suppose that's his crime. Is there a persona going on here somehow? Oh, yeah, well. Two, who will clarify the story? A, I don't know if your guy's schedules are a problem, but if it's not, then who other than Jason is going to break or Patrick to do, to do the job? <coughs> they made the original trilogy story. Shouldn't they be the ones to finish it? Three, do they have the time? Are they even available? A, I don't know if you guys have the time, but as for availability, Jason Jones, you're obviously available. I again don't know if you have the time to clarify the accuracy of the author's depiction of the story, unless you yourself have to write it. But I doubt you have that sort of time. Lack of effort finding pig with Jason. Greg Kirkpatrick. Interesting the cartoon drawing if you haven't seen it before. It's probably something you can find somewhere on that Marathon Studio page. They have a lot of uh, ephemera over the years. Hmm, I couldn't get any information to ascertain the availability of Greg. Whatever he's doing, if he ever wants to, he could be the author, or at least to clarify the author on his story, if not. I wonder what his... I got sources are for determining whether someone is available enough. Note. Oh, and by clarify, I mean that you can actually tell them what happens, then clarify, not just have the author make stuff up. I'm taking point. That's better. I got one on the to have had thoughts on how everything happened. I always told myself that the story was out there, in the creator's minds, of course. Another remote place. Four. What would the author write about? There's a huge number of answers to this question. I'm sure you know or knew the answer to this already, but I've gone over a few us fans would, would really like to see or read. Note. The possible most popular stories are assorted in the third terminal of this presentation, but there are still some issues that need to be covered here. Five. Too many new characters. Too fast. A problem that could occur would be if you develop new characters into the story that are not mentioned or not in a group mentioned in the games. This is only bad if it's not done smoothly. <clears throat> this was evident in the second Halo book. The Flood too many new characters too fast. In the first strike, the new characters seemed to fit somehow. It was done smoothly. I guess the new guys in the Flood were put into abruptly because there was no clue of their existence. In the first strike, however, you could relate to the new characters. I can't explain why. <laughs> that's that's the point at which I would want an explanation. <laughs> in short, only have characters in the book that were mentioned or in a group mentioned specifically in the games. Like McKay and Silva in The Flood, we all know Marines are a group in Halo, but McKay and Silva weren't specifically mentioned. Perhaps they were just too important in the story, like introducing a new character that saves us all in the final moments of Halo 3. This would be bad. That's how I felt about reading the Flood, introducing new characters that are too influential. I think that's what I meant. I'm really sorry if that was confusing. Back to the presentation. It's the funny thing, it's like he seems to be 
meandering a bit between a few points, or at least, you know, what may seem like a certain point that he may not have intended. It's almost as though he's writing a lot of this impromptu and not really looking back on it. You know, it does give kind of a conversational air to the whole thing, as well as, you know, having a certain, um, dare I say, adorable passion of, like, a, you know, a fired-up fan who's really interested in, uh, you know, sharing his creative ideas with a big company, you know, in a sort of, like, innocent letter to Santa fashion. But it's hard to say where the line for Moppy Puppy was at this moment in time as far as how much new characters could be introduced and in what way, given that the only named characters in the original trilogy, for the most part, are... AIs. A few key figures here and there, but not ones that have uh, much character development. As they're more reference rather than uh, speaking to the player themselves. In the nice pose, there'd be the security officer, and then Bob's. But would they all be referred to as Bob? You know, it's hard to say what he might have had in mind as far as uh, how much actual character detail or development that would have been placed in, say, just a handful of characters, largely AI and the protagonist. Anyway, it's all just a speculation and impromptu thought. Gotta love those early pixelated images of Marathon. And then with Duke in the middle, no less, see that's Fusion Unit Alpha. I guess a good example would be the Spartans in the fall have reached the other Spartans, though unnamed were mentioned in the manual of Halo. So a marathon, fusion unit alpha mentioned in the, in the Infinity Terminal at the end of a level, nah man, he's close would be an acceptable group of characters to name. But in the Flood there were a few major characters that bothered me. Two officers, Lieutenant McKay and Major Silva. Both were completely devoid of any clues to their existence. Especially that AI Wellseer or whatever, he shouldn't have existed at all. devoid of any clues to their existence. Keep in mind, I have never read the Halo books or even really played Halo. I briefly played Halo, the very first one, in late 2001, early 2002, briefly on Xbox while at a relative's house. I thought, hey, this is pretty cool. I put it down, and then I just never looked back, so... I don't know much about Halo at all. So I'm not sure what he's referencing. But when he says completely devoid of any clues to their existence, I wonder if he's referring to their existence in the Halo universe as shown in the game. Or if it's just that they were more alluded to but not actually present as characters, more as like distant figures, which again is a common feature in the Marathon game. Anyone who knows about this stuff, uh, feel free to fill me in in the comments section. And in general, just comment, you know, whatever you think about this. Okay, four personalities. I wouldn't like this, not done straight out anyway. For example, it's not, not solely held his breath. Are you the one called Yayap? Yeah, yeah? Enough. We're running late. Let's get on with the Zuka Zemami comes before the council seeking special dispersion. All humans look alike and are all are equally annoying. Now this is a battle, said the elite as his friend's head got blown away. This is unacceptable. The Kobe's aren't human, but seeing as Halo 2 set the bar that they can speak English, I won't say no more. What I will clarify is that four can't <coughs> speak English and that's final. I don't know about other aliens. But I have a solution if you need an alien to speak. A good way to have alien speech critical to the story spoken is to do what you did in the games. The player got to see a forwritten terminal at times. The terminal was translated to English. Do that in the book. Also, Blake sometimes told the player what the spit told him, but there was never any time when his spit went out and spoke to the player in English. There must be an alternative to alien speaking, speaking English. <coughs> Have the human characters be reading off of the alien written terminals through a translator. Note, I'm sorry to be over suggestive, but I find that people didn't like the personification of the aliens in the flood.
Japanese as personal vacation? Is that merely in the sense that they could speak and understand English, or was it more that they, you know, had a personalities that seemed too identical to that of humans? <clears throat> Story format. I believe the best course of action would be to just look at the short stories you give us in the manual of each game. However, first game was from first person perspective, second game was from third person perspective, third game was from four perspective. Be careful with this perspective as already suggested. <clears throat> Interesting, I never really read the manuals to those games. I didn't know that uh, Third was written from a four perspective. I want to read that. <clears throat> all in all, I'll leave making the book first or third person completely up to you guys. Okay, let's go off topic for a second. Look at the sentence you read earlier. All in all, I'll leave making the book first or third person completely up to you guys. Just by reading this myself, I can tell I sound very ignorant. Point being, if I ever start sounding like I've already convinced you into making a book, that's not what I'm thinking at all. I'm well aware that even now you're ready to say no. Ellipsis. Okay. Maybe I'm just a little under the notion that my presentation will convince you to create a book because of my persuasive language. But yeah, I don't think I'm overconfident. Some of these problems really aren't problems at all, just specifications that I think will, pre will prevent any problems. Okay, so you meant to put another quotation mark after the first problems in this page. And I think I speak up for everyone when kind of thing. Anywho, don't name the character. That's the bottom line. <laughs> it's so funny how he's so emphatic, you know, about it. Right after basically saying how, you know, this is only suggestions, you know, you don't have to take it too seriously. Don't name the character. Not that you would, but unlike Master Chief, whose name is John117, I don't think there's a good name for the main character of Marathon. One of the third party scenarios named him Marcus. I just wasn't right. You know what I mean? I think you meant to say it just wasn't right. But anyway, I think he's referring to Eternal, which. I am interested in doing a playthrough at some point, but I think um, all those involved in it are still working on, I guess, the latest version of it, so I want to wait until that comes out before I do a playthrough. Any other economic question is covered in the beginning of the terminal. I may have. I missed a lot of potential problems, mostly because I'm aware of them, so I'm sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Other than that, after all I've said, I hope you can't answer the question of why not make a marathon trilogy book. If not, there are two more terminals. The next terminal will go over all the stories we'd like to see, and some that could simply fill up pages to make it a novel. Note, all major must-be-told stories are in bold lettering. The fillers are not. directly to three. Good. Just remember this. Four. What will the author write? She was a portrait of himself. Anyway, there's a huge... There's a huge answer to this question. I'm sure you know or knew the answer to this already. But I've gone over a few of them. So I'd like to see <laughs> City. 
It was made clear by nine out of the ten Mijolnir cyborgs that turned the tide of the four ground assault. Then later, them and the rest of the army were just down to nothing. So they were nuked. This means the colony wasn't hit by yet another ground assault before they were bombarded. Think Matrix Revolutions, or maybe more like Animatrix, only with cyborgs rallying colonists. <laughs> yeah, Animatrix, the second Renaissance part 2, I'm only assuming you've seen it. And then a Matrix Revolutions battle for Blake and his men at this point is fit for the Stuff like that happened. <clears throat> the over-suggestion for the world to keep it factual marathon-wise. So ignore me if I suggest something totally out of what you thought happened, and ignore me. Otherwise, it'll be a fanfic, and that's not what I want. <laughs> so, really, the Amazon trilogy book won't be about the trilogy games, more like everything else. But what was I gonna call it? The Marathon trilogy, but not really the trilogy presentation. Uh -huh. I got it. Follow me. So, back to the presentation. <laughs> but that's what it's still on. It didn't seem like a big digression to me, but anyway. <clears throat> On the way to Lobon, we're in search of. This particular reason behind this tint or color filter is used for a lot of these images. Looks kind of cool, especially the very blue enforcer. But I just wonder why. This is really generally made in filler, the book still needs thickening. To Randall, this fit, they had to have some kind of adventure hopping about the galaxy for 17 years. Teaching the UESC how to make warp capable fusion missiles. The battle over Lawan spoiled the events of Marathon 2, etc. That'd be very interesting. Yeah, I would like that. You two to him, I mix. Yes, I don't really know how to explain it. I'm assuming that some of us are not all the reasons we just didn't see it in Marathon 2, such as Acme Station from Marathon Infinity. <clears throat> you know the ones where you work for Durandal. Look at the ones correspond because they should be specialized in not full understanding about the events on the mobile. Sorry. Blake. <clears throat> Blake and his men. This. Ultimately, you can make a book all its own. Don't you agree? Yeah. If the author thinks the story's plot is good now, she just has a different reaction back to the story. Like how it's just the same image there. Perhaps there could be a Matrix Revolutions battle as Blake and his men make a last stand just before the Spit Kirk come. Perhaps on Blake's house, him and his men have an untold adventure that makes Earth a better place as they return. Ignore that if that's not how it happened. Speaking of Earth, Earth. So how's it going on Earth in the 28th century? I'd just like to know. Maybe a prologue that depicts Earth before Marathon. Wonder how it disconnects from that. It'd be maybe in that end, in that instance there could be like a connection to pathways in the darkness floor. Disconnected room, although this one is interestingly enough close to the 1D room, of course. Now, all right, a timeline 2194, war between Icarus and Thermoplyae, pilot, whatever. <clears throat> 2395, purchase of Deimos from freeholders by UESG 2402, doors manual written up 2405. Marathon project begins reconstruction phase. 2408, Deimos conversion begins. 2442, Misery Art Massacre at Food Riot. 2465, Marson's place conversions on the <coughs> Sorry, I don't know what's with my throat today. More so than usual. But I am reading a lot, which I don't normally do aloud. 2466, Failed Martian coup. MIDA controls government for a short period. 2472. Launch of Marathon. 2773. Marathon arrives at Tau Ceti. 2787. Colony established. 2794. Marathon attacked. 
high technology races. They were only mentioned once during the original marathon on the level Try Again. Extensive use of subservient client races for manual labor at home and as soldiers abroad. Most of their slaves are taken from low technology worlds, often by the hundreds of hairless light skinned bipeds, nearly two meters in height, with three red eyes arranged in a triangular pattern. Thousands at a time, usually for sale to high technology races. <clears throat> The evidence of five technology races is among a scattered gibberish, but from what I can tell, the four rose to prominence by selling slaves to high technology races. Therefore, if the four are our enemy, so must be those high technology races. And I believe the fall of the power empire would undermine those high technology races. Now, do you hear that? Three juggernauts died in rapid succession. <coughs> Alright, no one. And I believe the fall of the four empire would undermine those high technology races and cause unrest, perhaps even war between themselves. So either they destroy each other, or the universe will have to deal with them, won't they? <coughs> Seems like a good idea, really. A lot of this has inspired me to uh, go back over marathon lore from the original trilogy, as I haven't really been immersed in that for some time. Certainly not since about the time that I finished the original trilogy in 2017. <clears throat> but there are different directions to take it in, even if not especially for a conversion scenario. Perhaps even one theoretically, and this is at the far end of possibility, kind of, but where you actually play as part of a different alien race. And uh, either your enemies are humans or humans aren't really involved at all. At least, perhaps not, except in uh, plot points. That could be interesting. I don't believe I've even known of a marathon scenario that is like that. <clears throat> but I wouldn't be surprised if it's out there. Anyway, minor critique, but if it were me, I would more intercut some of these ideas with... Uh, <clears throat> factual stuff he cited before, namely in the recollection of that uh, terminal about high technology races and also the timeline of events. Because it takes a bit to, you know, see what the point of citing these particular facts is. And there may still be yet more point to uh, be shown, you know, which uh, might be hard to keep track of all that and all the facts that they pertain to that I mentioned earlier. Even though, in all fairness, you could still kind of scroll back and forth with the page up and page down buttons. <clears throat> Alright, so, everything after Marathon 2 and Infinity. Oh, bold and underlined. This is basically the entire point of this presentation, even though I've already gone over most. This is just a reminder that this is what we want to see. <clears throat> especially those years before the Four Empire fell. That and during the fall of the Four Empire. Combined UESC and Svitkar fleets classing the final four planet. Totally obliteration. We don't want a bad ending now, do we? Just tell it how it happened. Earth during the second colonial period and such should also be mentioned. Note. Pardon my overconfidence. <laughs> I thought you just said you didn't have any earlier. <coughs> Sorry, again, it definitely uh, lends to the idea that he kind of wrote a lot of this on the spot in kind of a loose fashion and didn't really go back over a lot of it. Although I'm sure he was brewing a lot of these ideas for some time. But it would be funny if he just started not really thinking about ideas until he sat down to write to them about ideas and just came up with them. That's just speculation, though. I don't think that happened. So, the three AIs. Self-explanatory, right? Does Tycho ever really die? What happened to Leela? Did Duranel manage to escape the closure of the universe? And if so, how? Like already stated earlier, there are so many good stories. If I miss any, include them if you'd like. This is all assuming if you will even want to create a book. On the marathon story page, there is a quote from Leela. There are obviously many things which we do not understand, and may never be able to. This is what I want to change. We just know so little. If the book doesn't prove Leela wrong, it'll at least change the word many into few. Well, we've covered info, so to six stories, now for more reasons why a book would be good. 
This next terminal will cover that. And another thing that compelled me to look for the truth, the seven in the place of the T, of course, in Marathon. So much so that I wasted 24 hours trying to get presentation software just to learn the cost was over $100. Then realizing I could use the Marathon map editor as presentation software. I hope this doesn't offend. <laughs> That's, that's so funny. Well, at least he came up with the idea at the end. I, I do think this is a pretty cool medium that wish to express an idea. It'd be cool if he actually did a presentation on something totally marathon unrelated and say a class and uh, embedded it in a marathon level. Especially if say it had something to do with uh, like Renaissance Italy or um, Leonardo da Vinci which case he could have done it in the Tempus IRA level. Anyway, then I had to learn how to get Forge running on PC, then how to work the accursed thing, then writing terminals and learning how to put them in my, in my map, then polishing it. 24 hours of work over a five month period. Slow. All right, here we get nice little guilt tripping part. Okay, so now onto four. So, the last Bungie created marathon was Marathon Infinity. Infinity referring to that infinite pattern stated at the end of the game. Infinity also refers to the infinite story endings you can make up with the map making software that came with Marathon Infinity. That's the same software I used to make this. Infinite was the word. So many variations came out, they were good for a time. Clean and pure. As time went on, they got bigger, and as time went on, they got bizarre. But the biggest ones so far are Marathon Rubicon, Marathon Eternal, Marathon Evil, Marathon Trojan, etc. I wonder, at this point, Tempus Iray might be bigger than Trojan, but didn't come out after and before this presentation. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. And of course, there was Phoenix, but anyway. That's probably bigger than Trojan at some point. Regardless, some of these seem like perfect sequels to Infinity. Some, however, should not be called Marathon, such as Tempus Ire or Eternal. These and others either mutilate the storyline or have such bizarre storylines and imagery that you forget the past original Marathons. <clears throat> I don't know, I definitely don't think that Eternal is very much connected to the original storyline. At least it intends to be, I know that much. And, uh, Tempus I Ray, really the only thing altered about it is uh, the textures, the environmental textures and uh, sounds. The actual uh, weapons enemies are the same, except for a different looking juggernaut, maybe slightly altered physically. But yeah, it doesn't deviate too much compared to some other ones you mentioned. Anyway, he says, as games they were great. But as marathon games, they were bad. They were some twisted, deformed deterioration of what used to be marathon. I believe that these games are a symbol of what's happening. Like cloning, the more clones you make, the less identical to the original they are. This theory comes from Farscape, a sci-fi original series. <clears throat> I'm also reminded of the really dumb comedy movie called Multiplicity, but that's something. If you disagree with me, compare some third-party scenarios to the originals and you'll want to see how good yet unmarathon they are. <clears throat> Although they could be considered legitimate, the Marathon Infinity Infinite Pattern has every sort of story, like the old Time Funnel shows or Sliders, another sci-fi channel series. I actually don't think I've heard of either of those. That could be interesting. I didn't like Sliders, but it's a good example of what I am talking about infinite amount of worlds, and they're always trying to get back to their own dimension. So it's sort of like hamburger sliders, but for dimensions instead. Anyway, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. In other words, if there are an infinite number of endings, where is yours? Not to mention that if you do release a book, life expectancy of Marathon shall increase dramatically. How? You have over a million fans of Marathon. They'll buy the books. More importantly, the third-party map makers will now know the story and scenarios will be soon to follow. 
This will make scenarios more factual and give more marathonish feel to third party scenarios. I don't know how much crossover there actually is between all those groups he's referring to. He's definitely enthusiastic, although this was also 2005, so it's different. <clears throat> no more gothic or psychotic scenarios, or at least a lot less. Note, again, it's not that the more bizarre marathon scenarios are bad games. They're just not marathon. I hope you know where I'm coming from. The rest of the presentation will be reminders slash other part of the information I give to you. So what it's really saying is that in a persuasive perspective, I'm running out of ammunition. I also like how he just put up pictures of the Halo books and then cross them out and put marathon for each of them. Duke sitting there. In all fairness, that is a satisfying image. I think I'll want to save that for later. I'll take a screenshot right now. So all in all, I hope you can make a book for all of us marathon fans. Notify us in advance and we'll buy the book. Make a big enough deal out of it and even the Halo fans will come. Put an advertisement in the Halo 2 slash 3 book if one's coming. There are connections in Halo 2 Marathon that I've already mentioned in the be beginning. It's kind of funny how it uh, misspelled beginning with two G's just because it does seem like a kind of begging level or presentation. They'll have to see what you're so proud of. B. One final thing to the author, if you decide to make a book. There is a strategy to keeping things marathonist that matters. The strategy is to go to chapter. Boy, that was another three crashes in a row of juggernauts. Anyway. <clears throat> the strategy is to play the chapter screens of the marathon game. You're sequeling every 20 minutes until done. They really set the mood. I didn't apply this here, but it still gives you a clue on how the player or reader should feel as he goes through your project. Altogether, just give it a feeling as you apply content to the story that covers what we'd all like to know. <clears throat> Interesting idea, just playing this chapter screens over and over. Anyway. Marathon, Marathon 2 Drenal, and Marathon 3 are more than just excellent games for the Mac OS and Windows 95, Marathon 2 only. They tell a story. It is a complex story revealed in a novel way through a series of computer interface terminals. This is a quote from the Marathon story page. It is like a novel, so what could be the harm in making one? <clears throat> Clarifying statement. If I were to be direct, I'd go out and say, I want you to make a book about Marathon that covers everything we didn't see in the games. That was the objective of this entire presentation read the entire presentation and got just a little bit, so I thought I'd clarify my objective. See, it's interesting because I was certainly like a marathon book, but it seems that uh, Infinity was designed in such a way as to basically leave it open enough so that they wouldn't have to worry about closing it, basically. You know, where it's part of the idea that it's just the, its own unsolvability. So I guess they could, you know, continue that and uh, make a book on it that wouldn't give the answers, but would just further hint at them or maybe answer some of the questions asked, such as Moppy Puppy is asking, but yield yet new ones, which would be inevitable to an extent anyway. Anytime you tell a story, you always invite new questions. But something tells me that that would just leave Moppy Puppy even hungrier for more. The book is not a question of why, it's a question of why the hell not, as he stands in front of the matrixy background there. Now that the Marathon, tro marathon Trilogy is freeware, <coughs> sorry, this may be the last time Anderson Marathon peaks to its highest ever again. Time isn't short, but it's now or never. We know you guys love your Marathon. It's all over Halo and Halo 2. Don't deny it. <laughs> Nice little picture of the security drone there, too. The marathon symbol is everywhere in Halo. So it says, you think you're big time? You're gonna die big time in Halo 2. Halo 2 level subtitles like Delusions and Grandeur like of that marathon multiplayer map. If you're proud of it, 
Help it live longer and happier. Ellipsis. I don't know about the happy part, but help it live anyways. <clears throat> it's time for you to go to the decision room. Do as you wish, but tell me yes or no and why it. In T R U P P E at hotmail.com. I decided not to grunt that one out. I just hope, as I said earlier, you'll be able to look at this and say that's the most amount of sense I've heard all day. Ellipsis. Or not, it made sense to me anyway. Okay. Let's make this quick. Quick because the speech I originally made for this terminal got erased in a horrible event with my Mac emulator. Anyway, quickly. Are you going to make a book? You don't have to make a book immediately, just eventually. Please make something happen. A lot of time was put into this. <laughs> Left the terminal. No. Right the terminal. Just go right. The right way. Alright, so let's see. What happens? So, left one says, Damn! for you. <laughs> and that's it. Either the decision doesn't do anything, doesn't take you back. But this would be the place I can teleport out. But I can't get out of here. So unless there's some kind of issue and conversion from uh this was originally made. I think there was a mistake in the design here. Still, it is nice to be able to uh, see this room from the inside. There's some lattices and the vacuum gap, if you will. <clears throat> some good aesthetic sense to what Bobby Puppy made here. For that matter, I'd be curious to see some of the maps he made. Out, so anyway, this is as good as finished. That was the Marathon Trilogy book presentation by Moppy Puppy. Again, definitely look at the little story and links in the description because this little tale of Marathon lore is pretty funny and interesting. If you thought this was funny and interesting, wait until you find out if you haven't already about the way that uh, Moppy Puppy delivered this idea to Bungie Software and the kind of reaction he got. It's a big piece of community lore. Of course, again, he was a teenager and it was 16 years ago, but if uh, Marathon Huge proved anything, it's that the Marathon community never forgets. And more so than an elf. Alright. Well, I'll, I'll, there are more juggernauts out there than ever. Well, I'll see about what to show you all soon enough. It might even be Tempest I Ray pretty soon. That's been one that I've been wanting to get to again for a while. But it shouldn't be too long before you find out. Until then, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry again for my speech issues.